Hey, and welcome to Fit Me to Rock Fitness Podcast, a podcast for people who want to get no BS information about fitness and know that fitness is about so much more than losing scale weight. It's about feeling confident in your skin and empowered in your life. I'm your host, Tura Virta, personal trainer, strength and nutrition coach, and most of all, a husband of my beautiful wife, Miriam. Each week, my guests and me will give you some no BS fitness tips and motivate you to take action in your own personal fitness journey as we talk about nutrition, exercise, mindset, personal development, and executing in life with enjoyable but still effective strategies. If your goal is to look better, feel, and be strong, and experience transformation from inside out, you, my friend, are in the right place. Thank you for jumping in, and now let's jump into today's episode. So welcome to Fit Me Tool of Fitness podcast. In today's uh, episode is I have a guest, uh, Beth, who actually won in early December, three months of uh, pre-coaching. And today we are catching up how everything have went and uh, what have uh, how these three past three months have uh, worked and what have happened. So uh, thank you so much, Beth, for taking your time and uh, and uh, willing to do this quick uh, review how everything has changed. So uh before we get started, just uh, introduce yourself shortly, who you are, like where you live, how old are you, and uh, then let's have a chat. Yeah, hi, I'm Beth. I live in uh, California, and I'm 46 years old, almost 47. Um, so yeah, I live in the United States, I'm born and raised here, and I uh, love living in Southern California. Nice. So what about your family? Do you have uh, uh, what kind of work you have? Uh, how is you worry what kind of family you have? Yeah, so I um, have a twin sister, a, a, an identical twin sister, and I'm married. Um, so I've been with my husband for about 12 years. And then we have a little dog, um, no mm-hmm. children. And um, yeah, and then my mother is still here. We all live very close to each other. I live in the childhood home um, and I live really close to both my mom and my sister so I get to see them all the time which is great my husband is from the east coast um, so we get to see his family a few times a year oh, nice nice uh, so now if you think back that can you reflect like on overall that experience of the, the past uh, three months uh, uh, working with me as your coach like uh, how you feel about the progress you have made like both uh, physically and mentally yeah so i remember it all very very clearly um so this all started actually when i was on a trip in argentina with my husband and even though we're very active i tend to find that whenever i go on vacation when i'm out of my usual eating routine you know even though we do a lot of walking and exercising i'll sometimes end up feeling like i'm getting a little chubby on the trips or that type of thing and so i was in argentina feeling a little bit frustrated and looking at instagram um and there had been somebody that i had been following that i had you know been curious about their program and i looked at it and i was thinking maybe it would be a good fit And when I looked more, I realized it wasn't going to be a good fit. And then um, I think it was maybe two days later, I saw your post um, and I had been following you for a little bit. And the stories about um, other people that had won seemed very compelling and more extreme. Um, And so I didn't ever imagine that I would get selected, but I decided to just apply um, because I was so frustrated with how much mental space and energy um, food and body had taken up for years. And so I said, I'm just going to apply. If I get selected, it means, um, you know, that there's something for me to do here. If I don't get selected, I'm just going to let it go. And I'm going to stop worrying about this and just trust that I'm doing the right, right things. And I don't need to worry about this anymore. Um, And then I think it was two days later, um, I found out that I was selected. um, Mm -hmm. And it just felt as soon as I started working with you, it just, I think it was like, even your opening messages, it was like, oh my gosh, this is the exact person that I'm supposed to be working with. Because I worked with nutritionists in the past and that kind of thing. But there was everything about 
your style where as somebody that likes to do things perfectly, it was like right off the bat, you gave permission to do things imperfectly mm-hmm. with like the workouts and with the eating. Um, and so um, I liked like with your your program, it's great because it's like three different things with like the videos. So there's a lot of information, um, but then there's the focus on nutrition. But I distinctly remember you saying that you weren't going to tell me how to eat, that it was you know, for that it needed to be things that I liked, because if I was doing something that I didn't like, that it wasn't going to be sustainable. And Mm -hmm. everything that I wanted was sustainability. So I was like, okay, that's really cool. And then um, with the workouts, I remember thinking that um, I was already doing Pilates, and I wanted to figure out how to blend things in. And you were very gentle and kind of insisted that I not try to take on too much because, again, you wanted it to be sustainable. So, you know, I think I kept thinking, even though I knew I wanted it to be something I could maintain, I also had this pressure on myself um, to do things like a certain way. Um, And then, yeah, just through the checking in, it's like you've always been so supportive. I tend to be quite hard on myself. So even like in getting to share with you through email with work pressures or different things, like you're always like a very nice mirror that says like, Oh, it sounds like you're very caring or, Oh, it sounds like you're very hardworking. And these things that I try to be, but I don't think I always give myself credit for. And so it's been pretty amazing that for somebody I've never met in person, you seem to see things in me that maybe I don't always see in myself. Um, so, um, yeah, so month one was like very exciting. Everything was new month two, things became a little bit more real because like my food cravings and everything had gone away. And then I was left a little bit more with like my own emotions because usually I used food, to cope with my emotions. So some things bubbled up a little bit more in month two. And then in month three, it's felt more like, oh, this is kind of the new normal. And I find myself thinking, well, what, what next? Like I have taken a class that I've always wanted to take um, and like doing new things that I didn't really have like the mental space or energy to do before that now I find myself like looking around like okay now what I want to do because I'm not spending that time and energy on like worrying about the food and body stuff like that just feels more like I have a system now so I don't have to worry about that as much no those are those are great like uh because uh, it's uh it's it's literally like a, you know even there is so much information it's uh, sometimes like you said you are you have been in the past so hard on yourself and uh, sometimes uh, it's even you probably now if you think like it it was nothing like magical like maybe a couple small shifts what you have been doing and then then like for eating for emotions like you mentioned uh, it's it's li- really like a, it uh, feels probably like a very challenging like that if you if that is if that have been like you know you have been doing only pilates you have been uh gaining or doing certain things in vacations reacting certain situations like um, emotions for eating food and now when you try maybe something different and it's it leaves like that kind of uh empty space where everything like that what what is now how i'm like and it's it's uh i'm not gonna I don't know if that is you, but usually this is then, you know, you have, you are making some kind of progress. And then next thing is like that you're going to have public fear of losing that progress, what you have made. Like that is very, very common. I don't know. Have you ever, are you currently having like kind of fear of losing progress or, or any oh, yeah. kind of thoughts? Well, I've definitely had that along the way. So yeah, it's interesting that you say that because I know that there have been different points where like when I hit, a weight that's lower than I've been in a, in a long time, it's almost like, yeah, that will end up kind of scaring me 
a little bit. I, I remember, and I'll then end up um eating more or doing things because yeah, it's like I'm scared of the progress. Mm-hmm. And I know one time when I was writing to you or something, I ended up saying like, "Oh, it's it's almost like it felt can feel a little bit out of control to be mm-hmm. making that progress." Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I take control back over by eating. Um, and then I just have to catch myself, but then I hear your voice in my head, like that that's okay. Or, um, like not to dwell on it because I think that's, that's the problem. That's when the problem could really start. It's like, one day isn't really a problem or one meal really isn't a problem, but it's like, if, if I keep doing that, then that would erode my progress. Um, but like, um, yeah. And I think even recently, like part of me, it is, I am missing some of the sweets or something. So then I, I have like healthier recipes and instead of me beating myself up for, Oh, I should be having the chicken, but Mm -hmm. instead I'm having, you know, this other thing, but it's like this other thing, it's still way better than what I used to do, which was candy or, yeah. you know, something like that, that would really make me feel terrible. And then I would get headaches and had all of these consequences. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other time I was scared about making losing progress was when work got really busy mm-hmm. and I felt like I had worked really hard to come up with this good routine of Mm -hmm. Pilates and being able to do your workouts. And it it all felt quite easy to fit it in because I figured out a good schedule Mm -hmm. and then work got really busy and I was working till eight or nine o'clock at night and was very worried that I was going to lose all the progress that Mm -hmm. I had made. And we talked and it was so helpful to just Um, think oh okay all I need to do is come up with a different routine for this period of time like I can be very black and white and I want to come up with something and then if it works I just want to stick with it I don't want to have to change it um, Mm -hmm. because to change it means then maybe something won't work you know it just brings up the fear and so Um, It was so helpful because you kind of gave me permission to just come up with a different routine that I could do for that period of time and then trust that when that time got, when I got through that, that then I could adjust again, like that none of it is forever because somehow my brain always goes to that, like, this is forever. Um, Mm -hmm. And the fact that I would, had your was working with you then I actually had things I could do from home so it's like if I stopped working at nine I couldn't make it to a Pilates class but I could do your workout so then I felt really good that it's like oh I am still able to do something or even if I couldn't do the whole workout there were some nights where I was getting ready for bed and then I would go grab the weights and just do a couple of arm reps Mm -hmm. and my husband would say I thought we were going to bed and I was like we are but I just need to do something so that I feel good about doing something today before I go to bed Um, and again that was like kind of your voice it was like even if it's like five minutes then I could at least say okay I did something for five minutes even if it's right before bed when I'm supposed to be winding down I so, uh, I love it. It's yeah. it's exactly this like kind of consistency beats perfection. And if yeah. you are not able to be consistent or or you can't keep those kind of promises what you make to yourself then you must adjust your uh expectations. Mm-hmm. Like uh, and it doesn't matter like this is the hardest like I I feel that many many so many people are struggling with this part and you have done it incredibly well like what you just said that you know it, it even it was like a, just doing one exercise five minutes before going to bed then you know it's if you if your goal was to work out on that day and you know a lot of things happened and uh life got on, on the way and you couldn't do it but then you still proved yourself the point that i tried also today so then if i can't do the whole thing uh tomorrow is another day 
but you are not because it it would be obviously you are not uh, going to get the most amazing results by working out five minutes but if you start to skip those things for yourself then mm -hmm. next time becomes again easier this was exactly the same thing what i actually did today i uh, when we are recording this, I I had a literally I should work out forty five minutes, but then uh, things got on the way. I couldn't do it, and but I said I gotta go. I gotta start. I ended up doing ten minutes, and then I said I called it for a day. Uh, so, but of course, I wanted to first. My thought was to talk talk myself out of it. That now nah, it doesn't make mm -hmm. any. There is no point of doing ten minutes like that. I just skip it. But then I said no. I know that uh, if I don't do it now. Most likely, I don't do it tomorrow, and then I will miss a day. So, uh, in this way, you are not missing a day, even it's not the perfect, but it's still becoming consistent, keeping promises what you make to yourself. And then later on, when uh, time is better, it's so much easier to start adding things again. Or, or often, it's also also that that when once you get started, then you are like one more, one more, and then you end up doing probably a lot, lot, lot more than you originally wanted. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so just a little bit about your progress. Like, uh, what kind of results? Like uh, you said, you have be, you are in a lowest weight where you have been. So, what kind of results you have seen within these three months? Like yeah. First, so... let's talk about first first those uh, physical results. Like, what what are kind of like measurable? Yeah. So, um, I think the first thing I noticed. Well, I mean, I definitely felt stronger so I remember when I first did the workout some of them it was really hard I couldn't even do them all the way or um that kind of thing so I've noticed that I definitely progressed um with that so I'm like stronger I'm able to do some of the exercises that I couldn't do at all in the beginning and then physically I think the first things I noticed for my legs, like that my legs really thinned out, um, mm. especially like my upper legs. Um, and I noticed it more with my profile. Um, if I turned to the side, I was like, oh, I'm my mm. legs look trimmer. Mm. Um, and then it was more my arm, my upper arms. So I've always been a little bit self-conscious of my upper arms. And I noticed that they thinned out. Um, and then it's just like every week or so I'll notice something different. So like most recently it's my shoulders. Um, I had a friend comment on my, yeah, on my shoulders, but then I was noticing like things being trimmer mm -hmm. all through here. Um, my abs, like I have like the side abs or whatever, like, and then this week I've noticed, like, I hardly have any, um, I'm really slim through my ribs. So it's just like every week or so Absolutely. I'll notice something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, and even simple things like the bath towel, like, fits differently around mm -hmm. me than it did in the beginning. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, like all of those kind of physical changes. And it's weird because I think it's easy to go into it thinking it's going to be like a radical change all mm -hmm. at once. Like yeah. that one day I'm going to wake up and all my clothes are just going to oh, fall yeah. off of me or be baggy, but it happens so incrementally. And, and I do remember you saying that like, you can't control where you lose the weight. So mm -hmm. it was like, even though maybe I wanted, I wanted my arms to maybe be the first thing that changed. Like, that's just not how it works. Your body is no. going to change wherever it's going to, when, whenever it's going to. Um, yeah. And just taking, I guess, credit or being, noticing any progress mm -hmm. um, rather than being focused on certain things. Cause it's like, if you're just focused on one part, then you're going to miss the progress that you're making on other parts. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of helpful to hear that from you in the beginning. Cause I th think that's where it's easy to get tripped up. If you have like very specific expectations, mm -hmm. but that's where like, yeah, you talking about you, you were good about knowing that that was going to be, maybe a thing so then it's like something to watch for yeah um 
so yeah, physically that was a big thing. I think food was a big thing um, with the cravings it was a huge thing that I noticed that first month, like kind of right away. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's been another big change and just feeling, I mean, I guess the other physical change is just feeling more confident and stronger. Um, so even like with Pilates now, like ex things that used to be hard just aren't mm -hmm. hard. Um, and so again, it happens so incrementally that it can be hard to recognize, but then it's like, Oh wait, like a few months ago, I was hating this exercise and now it's like not a big deal. Mm -hmm. And so it's just reflecting on that is helpful. Oh yeah. No, those are those kind of daily wins. Like, uh, obviously, you know, we can talk about like how much scale weight you are losing or, or, but like in your case, you don't have, um, excessive amount of fat. So, so I don't know how much scale weight you have lost within this time. Do you remember it? Just a few, I think about five pounds, which was actually what I wanted to lose. But I know mm -hmm. that I've gained a lot of muscle. Yeah. So yeah, part of me is like, I can't believe I'm not. Yeah. I yeah. can't believe no. I haven't lost more. And then yeah. it's like, but I know my body composition yeah. has changed oh, a yeah. lot. Yeah. And it's it's not, it's it's a very realistic, like that was not even initial goal to get scale going down as much as possible mm -hmm. and it was just that basically like you mentioned uh, when we started to work like it was more gaining that confidence getting stronger and uh and uh especially those uh kind of emotional eating habits and mm -hmm. trying to break those those things away which are then causing is the ultimate reason why you had those problems with uh, uh vacation weight gain and uh all that kind of uh stuff so so those those were kind of goals and uh and uh that uh, you have done you have worked so hard and uh that uh, i believe you have achieved pretty well what were which were those goals what you were aiming for mm -hmm. so yeah but, for sure but still in your latest like we talk like i i sent you obviously your before after pictures you were in the beginning you were not like that should i be sending those pictures for some stranger like and and uh i said that that's totally up to you but uh, just make sure you make them and uh, now now when you look your before after pictures there is a like i see big change within like if you think it's only two and a half months or or uh, less than three months and uh, but you still you mentioned like that it was first thing uh uh, what you what you you've told that you were feeling kind of a little bit down after seeing those before and after pictures but uh, then you were noticing those significant changes like uh, what you just me mentioned and feeling dramat uh, dramatically uh, different so what what was your kind of uh, what what do you think now about those this old journey and those uh, pictures Yeah, I mean, I th I think that pictures also represent me stepping out of my comfort zone, which is even me doing this video. Like, so I think that's what's kind of cool through this whole process is what what parts feel more or less comfortable. So mm -hmm. it's like for me, I've always enjoyed exercise. So exercising isn't a big deal, but mm -hmm. taking a picture of myself is mm -hmm. uncomfortable which might right. not be that might not be something that somebody else is as uncomfortable with and yeah i mean it's the silly thing of i don't know how to take a good selfie you know like a like an influencer so yeah. my background had all my clothes in it and all you know so that was like the part that was almost more embarrassing it was like why wouldn't i have curated a better background or should I have had my husband take it instead of me yeah. trying to take it yeah. um and so it's silly or it's interesting to notice what the mental obstacle is um and yeah I think it's just really wild to have made so much progress so I am very very happy with the 
progress that I've made. Um, your last message really meant a lot to, again, I think have like an outside person saying how much they notice it. Cause I think it's easy for me to focus on what hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So it takes practice to focus on what has, um, mm -hmm. and, and to realize if, for me, the most important thing is just how I feel and I feel so different than I did. So that's almost what I see more in the pictures is like somebody that's more confident oh, yeah. than, than how I know I felt before. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's the part that I, it's a little bit unexpected because it, it seems like the weight or something is what's mm -hmm. important, but it really isn't that. It's no. like how... I feel um, oh yeah so and it and it feels like yeah I know I know it's been work but it hasn't been the, that much work it's really just the small things like it's doing the food prep it's you know making sure I have fresh eat. it's just it is the small thing so it's like the the daily small things and it's just about the habits rather than like these big, um, big efforts. Like you were able to do a program for me where I could use the few small home weights mm -hmm. that I have and still have this progress without having mm -hmm. to go get a huge brand new set of something or get wow. a new gym membership. So like, that's the part that's really cool. It's like, I could literally do these workouts while I'm watching a show oh, yeah. on Netflix. So it feels totally manageable because I'm getting to like decompress mentally, but do this workout, feel good about myself. And yeah, with the, and then I see the pictures and it's like, wow, that's pretty incredible that this I just wanted this outer layer of meat to come off and it is getting trimmed off, which is nice. Oh yeah. And it is, it is the progress is amazing. I don't know if you ever, I'm not big uh, anyways, using, using before after pictures because uh, it's, uh, it's, I feel it, it's for most people like, uh, like you mentioned, you want to, you see some maybe before after pictures online, but then whatever, what you get is like unrealistic expectations. And then, mm -hmm. you know, it leads again for that, that you are then when you think like that, uh, you are, you have made actually very good progress on, uh, and, uh, and then, but you feel kind of down because you compare yourself with some influencer mm -hmm. or someone else who you see in social media and you think that, you know, I, I, I should be doing more when the reality yeah. is that you are were doing great and it's it's uh, obviously things are working so you just keep to keep doing these small things uh what you have been doing and then maybe at some point obviously progress will slow down at some point and then it's time to adjust things what you are doing like uh, maybe eating a little bit more aiming to really like building that muscle where you could probably benefit to having a little bit more weights and uh and uh, then it's it's all about adjusting while you go because it's not uh, like I think I I mentioned it like that I I don't I don't know your I know your starting macros like where we are going to start but they probably are not going to be your finishing macros so it's to get started with somewhere not not make it too complicated because it's uh, it's just an estimation what it should be and then we will adjust after thirty days if there is needs. Uh, or, or if you did, you feel, or it's like that, there is no progress enough. Like that, it either scale is not moving. You are not seeing results in your workouts. There is no difference in pictures. You are not losing in tape measurements. Like kind of those, or you don't feel any different. Like so, th there are always those kind of measurements which are like uh, that. You can look numbers, or you can see pictures. Mm -hmm. What is the difference? And then there is that kind of that mental change, which is uh, and confidence, which is actually even more important. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned uh, uh, in that initial uh, uh, coaching application 
that uh, you were struggling with meal preparation and uh, wanting to feel confident about to in your approach to nutrition. So how have you overcome these challenges and uh, what kind of strategies have been the most effective in your, your creating those, your uh, sustainable eating habits? We were just talking about macros, and I think that was always something I wondered about if I was doing the right mix um, of macros, because like depending on what app I would look at um, as far as calories and macros, it, it was always a little bit unclear of like, should I be eating more? Should I be eating less? And so mm -hmm. it was helpful to have that starting point with you. And then it really worked for me. I mean, where we started is mm -hmm. where we are and it's yeah. worked really well with the amount of protein um, for me, mm -hmm. um, but also the, the carbs. Cause I think in the past, if I tried to do only protein, you know, like it just, it wasn't, it was never the right mix. So, um, so that was helpful. And then, so for me, it's really been a, and then I needed to find certain foods that helped. And so it just so happened that I think like right before we met, I had been introduced to um, like a canned chicken uh, mm -hmm. that was actually really tasty that has really been one of my go-tos um, for meal prep. Mm -hmm. And so finding, finding simple things that worked that I enjoy eating, but I can also do in a variety of different ways has been really helpful. So it's, you know, a simple thing of getting different mixes of fresh vegetables, depending on what's in season that I actually enjoy. Um, using the chicken in different ways, combining it with different types of beans. Um, I can either heat it up or eat it cold, depending on my mood or the weather. Um, and then finding some kind of more fun recipes that are still heavy with protein. So right. like I am somebody that has a sweet tooth. So mm -hmm. finding people on Instagram that are, that make, make, tasty things, but are full of protein, like an edible cookie dough or a mug cake. And so finding a, that mix of mm -hmm. um, simple things that don't take a lot of ingredients and don't mm -hmm. take a lot of, um, don't take a lot of time, but that I can do in advance mm -hmm. and then have readily available because that's what works for me is to be able to do the prep and then when it's time to eat, it takes like less than five minutes to like pull it together um, because I'm just not somebody that enjoys spending a lot of time in the kitchen and my daily life just tends to be busy. So it's it's just helpful to have things that are a little bit more grab and go. Yeah, no, I, those are amazing, amazing tips. And it's it's really like like you said, those small things ahead of time taking that mm -hmm. couple of minutes time let's say on sunday or saturday or on weekend uh to be prepared for the week in what is coming so when you are when you know at least your protein sources vegetable sources or you have uh, maybe prepared them already so then when that time is coming that you need to eat and you don't have you know that you probably don't have too much time or energy to cook uh hours so mm -hmm. it's uh, it makes things so much easier and obviously it has worked very well for you you have done an amazing job doing it in in advance and uh, and uh, i think this is something what you because if you even if you try like one new receipt per week or or one to two new receipts in a in a month that's uh, giving you so many new ideas to think that what it what it would be and uh, how you could implement it in 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 the future so now what uh, what uh, one thing what I always love to tell like or, or love to ask is uh, how you are going to celebrate your success because you I feel like you are also kind of uh, really hard on yourself and uh, and you don't necessarily like to give credit for yourself so it's everything is like uh, if you like, uh, let's say that you have uh, done all you have you end for four workouts you end up doing three. You are not celebrating those three workouts, what you did, but be kind of uh, 
pissed off with yourself uh, for that one what you missed but now after these three months what uh and all success what you have had uh, how you are going to celebrate your uh progress and hard work within these past months well this weekend i'm actually going away and i'm very excited about that so um it was funny because I had a workout scheduled for last night and part of me was tired and I wanted to put it off. But I said, well, you know, I knew that I was going to be away for a few days and my next workout is scheduled for Sunday. So I was like, well, if I procrastinate, then I'm going to end up having two on Sunday when I get back. So I need to just do it. So I did it. Um, but yeah, it's like I it's kind of cool because I know this weekend I'm going to just do as much or as little as I want um, with my friend. And so I know we're going to hike, but I think it'll be nice to just do easy ones and be outside, um, and just get to connect and relax and just let go. And I think, yeah, reflect on the last few months because it really has been a lot between, um, work and, and this journey and just reflect really reflecting on a lot of the progress I've made over this last year. Um, Cause I, I, my birthday's in April and I think part of my goal was I really didn't want to go into another birthday with this stuff in my head. I wanted to sort it out this year and feel like I was going into the next year just getting to be more focused on like fun and stuff that really fuels me instead of anything that kind of holds me back. And so I was even talking to my husband about it the other day of it's so crazy that now I'm really thinking about, okay, what are the, what are the things I really want to do? Mm -hmm. um, and what are the next things to kind of push me a little bit out of my comfort zone? Mm -hmm. Um, and so even, you know, I know I've resisted doing any videos, mm -hmm. um, but I was like, well, maybe that's really the next step is for me to find my voice and to do more of those. And I took this class, but I haven't done anything with it. And so I'm like, well, maybe I need to do something with it. So it's like, these are the things that where I'm still letting fear get in my way. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think so, I mean, that's not really celebrating, but it's reflecting and kind of thinking, okay, well, what do I want to do next that I can continue to feel good about myself? Because that's really where I don't want to let fear get in my way. And I think that's where I was letting that with some of the food and body stuff and um, feeling more confident now. It's like, okay, well, what next? So... So this weekend will be fun and relaxing. Um, and then going into the new year, I'll think about what else, what do I want to do for the next year? Yeah, no, oh, amazing. The, and these are, these are, of course, uh, I love the people like doing like, of course, that is really like going, if you really think like that success usually lies, uh, like, you know, in those things, what you are, what you know you should probably be doing but you have mm -hmm. been avoiding them and this is if for you your goal is a video or put yourself out more there like now you have took your first step so and um, i think you have done amazing job of doing it like videos or or talking recording a podcast episode what you were like really anxious of doing and now we are mm -hmm. kind of done and you, you have done an amazing job and it's it's not like honest truth is like that that uh, probably you will you will feel city about uh, uh if you if you are starting something new you have never done it you will probably be uh uh you will you will suck at it in the beginning but uh but uh uh in, in more more longer more longer you do it better you will get it so it's all about mm -hmm. practicing it so um then, like you mentioned, uh, that uh, you are not quite sure about how it looks, your next goals or what you want to do next. But what what you would say, what you would say uh, for your fitness, like how you are going to plan to to implement that, or prioritizing that your health and uh, 
and uh, well-being for when moving forward. Yeah, I want to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, so, I mean, what I like is the variety. So I like that I'm getting stronger in all the different parts of my body. So I really just want to sustain that. Um, I don't I don't have a specific goal of like being able to lift a certain amount of weight or anything like that. I think I just want to continue to try the different workouts because I just noticed that as soon as something feels, I don't want to say easy, but like I get used to it, all it takes is switching it up a little bit to get humbled again and realize, you know, there's something else to grow and develop. So I really just want to continue to, I think, try different things so that I don't get bored. I think that's mm -hmm. my biggest fear is like, I, I don't want it, to, it's like this hard balance of, I definitely want to continue to do things, but I, my main goal is I want to be doing things that are sustainable so that in 10 years I'm still still doing like exercises that I feel good about and that I'm not not pushing myself in a way that I'm going to injure myself or things like that so I I just want to continue to feel strong and um I should probably get more flexible cuz I'm a really tight human being so I guess that could be a goal is to do more stretching types of things but yeah, I'm just really liking everything that I'm doing right now. So I don't see, I don't want to continue to like go too crazy because I, I don't know that I would be able to sustain that over a long period of time. But I'm, I'm liking all the variety right now and it's really good. Yeah, no, this is, this is uh, like if, if what you, whatever you are doing is getting boring, uh, uh, it's, I think you should change the routine mm -hmm. what you are doing and this why that's why like it's i'm exactly the same like i need to have something else like if i would do just let's say strength training because i know that that is some something what i need to do i don't enjoy doing it but i need to implement it because it's ultimately that what makes me feel so much better feeling confident feeling energized and uh, uh that is but i don't like if i would do the same routine all the time it's yeah. what I like to use, like changing my objectives, like having a like a three month, four month plan in advance and working on one thing. Like uh, maybe at some point I focus on powerlifting. Next time is just uh, getting stronger, and then I love to do like focusing on maybe athletic uh, performance. So doing totally, it's still strength training. It's totally different every time. And then like now, this is what I have been doing myself for the past couple of years. And this has been the game changer. Like, uh, mm. if, if I look back, like that, how I have worked, like what kind of workout. So it's not only about like uh, just uh, making making one two adjustments, but just simply changing that whole objective and uh, and a goal. And uh, and that is that is it's keeping it so interesting. So so this is maybe something to think about what you probably would like to do, like or what you want to maybe implement at some point or or in the future months. Like just changing like now obviously for you was a big thing was to go away from uh, or not go away but uh, adding strength training like really using uh -huh. those weights which which obviously resulted great results and then uh other thing is like that then how to move forward like that it's not only repeating same routine until it's working it's a great thing but then at some point it's time to access things like still keeping that kind of weight training or, or strength training part of your routine but uh, changing changing it a little bit up mm -hmm. perfect so that have went so fast uh, is there last uh, tips what you would uh, like to Tell or advise what you would like to tell someone who is just starting their fitness and nutrition journey, what it would be. I think having a coach is really helpful because I think it's what I found was that there were some things that I felt more comfortable doing on my own, but I really did want or need a little bit of guidance. So, you know, I am somebody that was trying to eat healthy for a long time. I am somebody that has always enjoyed working out. 
And it was helpful to have somebody objectively kind of say, but what about like the strength training thing? Because I was doing like a lot of hiking or Pilates, but I wasn't doing the strength training, even though I knew that I should, because I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just felt overwhelming. Um, so I think it, it is helpful to connect with somebody and get the guidance because as for myself, I wanted to try to do everything perfectly. Mm -hmm. Um, and that can just feel overwhelming. And so to connect with somebody that can almost help do it one piece at a time, um, has just been a game changer. So, and I would just say it's, it's all about expectations and being really clear on what your expectations are and checking in with that. So like my expectations were to feel stronger mm-hmm. and then I would get disappointed that maybe my physical results weren't what I thought they should be. But then I had to remind myself, but my expectations were to feel stronger and I do feel stronger. So I'm meeting my expectations So it's like to not get distracted by other things as you move your way through the process. It's like checking in with what your original objective was. And my other objective was to not have food and body take up so much mental space. And Mm -hmm. it wasn't. And so it's like I'm meeting my objective, even if I'm not ready to be a runway model. um, That was never my objective. So why am I worried about, yeah, being looking like an Instagram influencer? Mm-hmm. Like that was not my objective. Yeah. So, um, so I think it's being really clear on what the uh, what's most important, and mm-hmm. always reflecting on that is what's been most helpful. And then that's what to me keeps me going because I have seen progress in those areas. And I think if I got distracted by other things, like when I let myself get distracted by the pictures, not maybe not being what I thought they were going to be, then I got down for like a day or two. Um, but if I check back in about my, what my real objectives are, I feel totally energized because mm-hmm. I've made so much progress. And so it's staying tied to that keeps me engaged and wanting to continue to do it. Whereas if I think if I get focused on other things, then it's too easy to get distracted and then maybe lose the momentum. Um, So, yeah, I think that's, that's what's been most helpful. Thank you so much, Pit, for your time and for your recording. If you want to share anything, what I can share, if you want to, that I share your Instagram story or, or handle or something where people can connect with you uh, feel free to do it and if not uh, i can add it into show notes and uh... yeah mine is uh private and nothing too exciting okay. to see Perfect. at this point so we're no, no, good no no that's uh, <laughs> i just i always want to give uh, yeah. a possibility yeah. if you don't want to do it no no problem so thank you so much for uh doing your first podcast and uh, interview and uh, I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you. Hold up, friend. Do you love Fit Me Tour Fitness podcast? If so, the best way to say thank you is to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review on iTunes. I know every podcaster wants you to leave a review, but it's because those reviews help the podcast to reach more people. I truly want to know what you think and if this particle episode resonated with you. Would you also please share it? Either send a link to someone who you think will find it valuable or take a screenshot and post it into your social media and tell your friends and family why they should listen it. Make sure you tag me so I can hear your feedback and give you a little love. And you know, if you aren't already following me on Instagram or TikTok, that's the perfect time to hit that follow button. Thank you for being here and listening to Fit Me to a Fitness Podcast.